Hello and welcome everybody to my channel uh, for another very special international episode. This time uh, I'm playing Dash Arena and I have the great honor to have Mr. Miroslav Petrovic with me, the actual designer of the game. Hello and welcome very much. Hello, thanks for having me. Absolutely, today's episode is sponsored by Maxi Maxi. Victory might be a can away. Okay. Um, some of you may know that I made a video about Dash Arena actually a few weeks ago and um, I reached out uh, to the designer in order to have a little show match and especially to have a little bit of a discussion um, about uh, how the game was designed, how it all came together uh, up until the final product and also we're gonna have a little show match during that time, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. I'm ready to lose. <laughs> um, for the people who are new to the game, um, I'm not going through too much of the rules. Uh, besides, if I'm doing anything wrong, then I hope you can correct me. Uh, but for any other reasons, I'm going to put my video, um, the link to my video, as well as a link to other videos by uh, Mr. Petrovic in the description. So you can look it up in either German or English. So we don't have to waste our time going through all of the very complex and difficult rules. No, just kidding. It's, I love the simplicity of it, especially. Yeah, we, we the rules to the game are much more complex and then we just started started trimming them away mm -hmm. and i believe the game is much better for it okay the for example the whole the the whole concept of prone figures is to remove the chain pushing and so on and so on to uh -huh. to simplify the game so for example i see which of the tables do you prefer? also Oh, yeah, no, sorry. I don't want to interrupt. Uh, the, the blue one. All right. Orbital Stadium. It's, well, it's the original board for, okay. for the game. So that's how you designed it in the first place. Yes, and believe it or not, it's the simpler uh, arena to play on. The one without any obstacles is much harder to to mount any any kind of sensible defense. Mm -hmm. It has much higher higher both skill floor and skill ceiling. Mm -hmm. Yes, it appears to me that there's quite a difficulty to um, you you in my uh, experience you cannot make that quick of a surprising run because there's just this narrow passageways that you have to cross in some way. Yes. I mean, I don't speak skill-wise. I'm not intending to actually uh, make much points. If you, if you, uh, if you would know my channel, I'm particularly, I'm not particularly good at games. I just love them. <laughs> That's how I do it. But I'm still uh, very Sim eager to uh, at least give it a try, of course. So, and having the blue team, I'm in a Yeah. I'm uh, sorry. I'm in a similar boat. I love games, but that doesn't mean I'm good at them. <laughs> okay, um, we just talked a little bit earlier before I started the recording um, about the rules and especially the, um, the special abilities of the characters in particular and that I personally, as I already stated in my own video, um, love to play the game as pure as it comes, so leaving those basically out just to have the three figures, the three dice, um, because it gives me the most of a balanced um, and uh, thinky feeling. Because I do not have to, you know, if you if you get played out by something that comes from a from a character ability that you just don't have in mind that well, um, it sort of feels too punishing for a player who is not spending too much time onto that. Yeah, the the game has has the problem of being easy to easy to get into but very hard to to keep it, keep at it at some point okay so because uh, it's yeah but it's mostly there there are a lot of possible moves mm -hmm. even if it doesn't seem that way because you only roll three dice and then assign them to to different figures 
but it's still a surprising, surprisingly complex, complex mm -hmm. decision th three. We try to do a simple AI for for a digital implementation and gave up at some point. So we'll probably revisit it. We need more data to to draw upon. Yeah. Because we couldn't figure out any sensible way to to let's say solve the game. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, uh, you would need um, quite a few uh, decision making options and also to uh, to get into the possibilities of what a player could do in his next turn because of uh, the positioning of his figures is also quite important. Yeah. So maybe if Alpha yeah, uh, has a little break, maybe you can uh, you can get the guys at Google <laughs> to do a little Dash Arena mod for it. <laughs> so it never loses again. You know, uh, that's that's actually a good idea. Maybe maybe we should try to go with with figuring out some neural network yeah. to do the work for us. It, it just has to play Dash Arena two and a half billion times in the span of half of a year uh, and then it might might become something yeah okay so if we don't if we don't uh, if we don't uh, miss something and mess up the the programming <laughs> and after the end of the uh, of the half year you realize that it can actually play uh, backgammon now instead of Dash Arena because it switched games in between. Okay, how do you yeah. want to do it? Do you want to use the characters or would you want to uh, leave them out for the time being, for our show match? Mm. I, I leave it open to you. Mm, I, am, I am okay with both options. Maybe it's better to go with the, the simpler one. I guess To also... be honest, I... To be honest, I haven't played with the... The original characters in a while now because mm -hmm. we're testing a bunch of different teams and different arenas okay so yeah. i will definitely maybe we can use them to to place the dice on yeah, that's, on that's, the character cards is true. okay also maybe we should Scale the disc a bit to make it easier. Uh, oh, you'll have to do it. To place it? Um, to scale the disc to 50%, so it's easier to move it around the, the okay. figures. Oh, awesome. Yes, okay. awesome. That's something I saw in your video and was... And was... Hmm, let's see. I couldn't believe that that didn't cross my mind. Okay. It definitely makes it much easier for di digital implementations. Yeah, you, could, you could just put it onto the figure and you don't... Because Tabletop Simulator sometimes has this upper and under thing where it just switches tokens in between and then you end up with the disc underneath the figure and it becomes uh, a lot harder to, to move yeah. around properly. Okay. So that's great. The disc is set up. The arena is clear. We have those um, those obstacles in the way that also create different bouncing zones. Uh, none of them actually leads to a direct goal hit, um, which I find interesting. Or at least I haven't noticed it yet. Um... Uh, they don't. The idea is if you're bouncing around, you need to have some some of some of your teammates to help you yeah. score. Yeah, because there's no way to get it into the goal by just throwing it and playing a flipper. <laughs> okay, great. Then I just say um, we start the game up. We play a little bit slowly, and uh, I might I might drop a question in here and there just to throw you off a little bit to make you unconcentrated and so in the end of course to uh, to secure my victory <laughs> sounds good sounds great. sounds really good then have a great game lots of fun um how do you determine start will do again you how do you well, we usually 
uh, it's usually either dice roll or just letting the opponent pick. Okay, should we say... There, uh, there is no... Highest sum of 3d6 chooses? Mm, I'd prefer 1d6 on even, let's say, you go first. All right. Good. Then you might roll it. Even. Okay. I go you first. go first. All righty then. And there are my three problems again. <laughs> uh, hmm. I'm. I'm I, yeah. 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 If you saw my video, you know exactly what my main problem with the game is. Um, I'm just a little bit too greedy. Uh, I tried to, to, to make it a little bit more cleverly this time because I was beaten so so badly. Um, okay, I guess it's because I start. It might no 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 I don't I don't take the trip. Um, I will just give one to him, and I'm gonna spend one impulse to move him forward. And then I am putting down the five on her. And uh, I will now very soon learn if I uh, understood the rules properly. So if I want to have her start in that direction, it would result in mm -hmm. spending one impulse, the first one to make the move, yes. the second to push him, right? Yes. Third to move. Third to go into. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm going to repeat that process for the fourth and fifth impulse. Yes. Great. And that's exactly. with only the five. And I'm going to make one, two. Is that very clever? No, it's not clever. Uh, let's go for one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So okay. the turn is done. The trap is set. Pick it it definitely is. Pick it up. It, defi it definitely is. Let me see. What I have, hmm. Give me a few moments. Mm -hmm. Let's try. This might be interesting. So, let's go with the... Let's go with the six on Gondred. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Then let's go with four, five, one, four. Hmm. This is too risky. But why not? Let's go with one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and four, five. Okay, so we'll be four to Boris. One, two, three, four, and five to Sonia. Going one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm very, very happy seeing you also counting the steps with, uh, with your cursor. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little bit of a relief, you know. In my group, we have this uh, we have this way to to uh, it's a thought experiment to determine whether a game is skill based or luck based. So you always just imagine playing against Gary Kasparov, and um, if you had any chance of winning, it's probably luck based. <laughs> and I think I can say safely that I probably would lose uh, every single game against him playing Dash Arena. Okay. Uh, yeah, like uh, I like the the Kasparov analogy. I mm. might use it when figuring out 
figuring out potential design ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing bad about luck-based games. There's a taste for everything. So some people just like to play. You don't. Uh, how's it called? I don't even recall the game's name. Munchkin. Some people just like Munchkin. You know. Munchkin. That's, yeah, yeah. It's a Peter Jackson. Yeah, game. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, let's just say I'm going one, two, three, pushing you here, and four giving you one last push because I would go around this corner, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Then I'm gonna have a two to wrap the disc. And one to back up here. Okay. Oh, nice. This will be an interesting fork, figuring out how to how to block scoring. Okay. Okay, I have some idea. Let me let me calculate a bit. To be one, two, one, two, three, four. Fill up the lay the disc here. That gives me enough time to reposition. Okay, so no, I move them. No, no, I just, think just turn them to whatever it was. I'm gonna see in the replay. I think it was. Repeated, and if so, uh, will you, um, of course. Have Please to, call me out. To, to, to write a negative Please. note on the leak. Uh, no, absolutely not. No, no, no. Please do. Please do. One, two, I three. think it was. Yes. Then. Four goes to. Conrad. One. Uh-huh. Two, three, four, leaving the disc okay. here, and finally going with Boris, one, two. All right. So you basically just took away my chance of making the throw this turn. Yes. Which also works quite nice defensively. And I am definitely sacrificing Gonrad for a turn. Uh huh. So it is what it is. Okay, that's a little bit more than I hoped for. But let's see how this can work out anyway. You can score. That, 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 don't spoil it! Don't spoil it. <laughs> you always have to assume that your opponent doesn't see it. Um, no, um, we have uh, the the courtesy thing when we'll, we're play testing. When the other player sees that there is a scoring possibility, they call it out. Okay. Because it really helps with the bunch of different special abilities and so on. Okay, you know what? Because I I'm really I'm doing well, but. If we can make this a little bit of a teaching lesson as well, um, could you show it? Because I really don't see it quite now. Just for the purpose uh, of the video, of course. It's not about scoring the three points. I can assure you that's absolutely not my intention. But would you mind actually showing me what to do? Uh, sure. So you take one four, use it on the how it's called the seven uh-huh move her here yes near the goal and then use oh, aesthetic I... to push her into the the scoring gate what that's sick okay that's actually quite good that's the the first one and i think there is another one 
uh, was here and the disc was here. I think it's four to. Is that it? It's one, two, three. No, it's a six to him. And then go to. Let me try it. Uh, it would be six here. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six. The disc stays here. Then go one. Two, oh, three, four, so oh, and I'm, yeah, we're missing one for the the other route, that's, we're that's missing still, one impulse. Quite, quite a sick move, quite a sick move. Um, one rules question I actually have, by the way, um, because uh, when you, um, if you would push an, a, a member of the opponent's team onto the discus, would you have the choice uh, to decide you... if you want to move the discus <laughs> with him? So bring it into possession. Uh, when you push your uh, when you push your opponent, you choose what happens with the disc. Okay. The the active player is the one that always chooses what happens with the disc. Cool. So that's three three points for you. Well. Um, I have a suggestion to make. Um, why don't we just say... No, no, no. <laughs> it's 1-1 one, one because you three... okay. No, no, no. It's, it's three points. We can always play more than one game. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, um, now the, you can the disc... actually choose where it starts, right? Yes. You left the option to put it in the center. I, I, uh, by I default, it goes, correctly. it goes in the, the center, but if your opponent scores in the previous, previous round, you get the choice to place it on your team's yeah. disc spawner. So you would only actually leave it after scoring in the center if you play against an opponent where you just go for the five KOs, right? <laughs> Come take it. Take for example, it. there are... Okay. It it becomes more interesting with special abilities mm -hmm. because some teams have interesting ways of of keeping control of the discs. For example, in the carries uh, carries versus toys box, there are so-called zombie sex bots that have AOE abilities. Mm -hmm. So one of the figures. Right now, that's the. It's still in testing because of the whole COVID thing, yeah. and testing testing the feel of the game online just isn't isn't what isn't. Uh, I don't know how to. Yeah, it's not the same. How to say? It. Yeah, and uh, the feel is something that I find much more important than anything else. And every team needs to, to feel interesting. Okay. Mm. Also, we are long overdue to release the, the tournament rules. Mm -hmm. That's something that should that should have come out uh, well around the time the, the whole COVID thing started. But because of the whole thing, we just postpone it mm. for a while. Okay. Yeah, that already sort of answered one of my questions because I was thinking about how um, how you plan to, or if there are plans to put out the other teams as well. They are coming at some okay. point. Uh, most likely we'll we'll release something because we well we are late almost a year mm. uh, for because of the well the yeah. whole situation more than a year late so we're, we'll probably release something that uses imposter bots for free with a bunch of arenas that are still in testing and so on mm -hmm. I, I'll I'll try to send send you some examples okay cool uh, but now for the turn okay uh, let's see is 
there anything particularly clever that I can do? Um, I have to... I guess I have to make this a little bit more difficult, I assume. Putting the four on there. Yep. Um, now we're gonna have the five on him. One, two, three, four, five. And finally the six. Um, or could you, would you, no you couldn't, I don't think so, oh yes you know what, uh, I'm gonna move him into this direction, so it's one, two, three, four, five, and six, so, uh, six would, I think, mm. oh, it's okay, I think, and the uh, work on the, the digital, digital version spoiled me a lot. Mm -hmm. It it really messes up the the whole spatial thinking when you have all the possibilities laid out to you mm -hmm. once you select the the figure. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if I can do something interesting. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. I can. So the three go. Okay, it was four, four, three, and five. Mm -hmm. In case they. No, it's. it's oh, they didn't. Three or four? It was four. Four to Gunrad. It's one, two, three, four. Three to Sonia. It's one, two, three, and five to Boris. It's one, two, three, four, five. All right. I think, I think you have around fifteen percent to to down, Boris. Something like that. Never tell me the odds. All yes. Right. <laughs> uh, that's. Not as much as I would hope for, but let's see anyways what we can try to accomplish. Um, push him down, give you a little knot. That's actually... Yeah, I think... No, I think... I don't see any chances for downing, but I might have a proper... Defensive. Uh, you can definitely, you can definitely defend from from this. Yeah, yeah, in some way. But, but let me let me play this out, and then you can afterwards tell me. Will do, will do. The the options. Okay, uh, activating him into this direction. So I go okay. one two. Um, then okay. I'm gonna put a four on him, moving backwards. So it's one two. Three, and I want you to lose the disc. So I can okay. Up on the spot, and it's a. Uh, I cannot. I don't want to sacrifice everything for the defense. So maybe, maybe. No, you know what? Go, go for the safe route. So I start moving to this direction. So it's one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's let's keep it like this. 
I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of what what one of your players can do standing here with the disc so so close when there's no yeah, back nothing up. nothing but depending on the the dice I have available I can do some shenanigans so let me figure out what I can do One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Hmm. This this might be interesting. So. What I'm going to do is 6 on Sonya, that's 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, mm -hmm. then I will go with to probably gone right, 1, 2, 3, 4, hmm. Five. Mm, I miscalculated somewhere. Give me a second. Doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five. One more here. Hmm. Interesting pickle. Two, three, four, five, six. No. One, three, four. Ah. Let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. And let's say the disc. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's too risky. And then go for. Let's go for one, two. All right. <clears throat> now I have to figure out. Okay, because this might take me some time. Um, is was your intention to make a sports game in particular or did you work out the movement system and then thought that it would fit a sports game uh it was the movement system first okay. the the mechanics were done first and then and then the the theme okay. came along i think the the first the first iteration had some abstract theme because cheaper artwork mm -hmm. mm. but then since i was working with marco vidakovic and well you see, you can see his art here so mm -hmm. yeah we went all in on on some let's say mm, semi nostalgic mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely it's 80s. Speed, I mean, yeah, space, uh, speedball something. Yeah, I'm, I'm also not that fresh anymore, so I can absolutely uh, imagine this as a Saturday morning cartoon. Yes, that was one of the, the inspirations. Okay. Especially the, the ones that were semi-popular in, in Serbia. Uh huh. In the 90s. So that's mostly what kids in in rest of Europe and and America had got to watch. Mm. In the 80s, well, we were a bit behind, 
so... Which is not a bad thing. <laughs> Given that uh, we grew up with... Robotech, uh, Saber Rider and so on. Yeah. I'm still processing. <laughs> I am still processing. Let's say I go for three on the big guy. Okay. Put into this direction, so put in one, two, and then he actually. And three is. Uh, he, three would be here. Okay. Because uh, only impulses are counted only when you change your space. Okay. So the two would do what you need. Um, if you don't have any other use for for two. Uh, no, no. The, the three is actually cool if it does that. Oh. The, okay. Uh, that was sort of the intentional space I wanted to end on. Um, but it's, uh, it's still, so I, I always figured out that if you move through one of those corners, um, it would still spend an impulse, but it doesn't, if you don't actually change it, the face, see that, yes, that, the, that's something that I haven't got. That's, tried. that's one of the rules that are in for consistency. Okay. It's a bit counterintuitive at first, but once it clicks, it's. More or less it, because if it didn't didn't work that way, then you would not be able to down the opponent that's in in corner. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now for that guy. Okay. Okay. Mm, let's see if I can do something interesting. Ah, come on! You always mm. get the high rolls. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I don't random. need high rolls at the moment. <laughs> I don't need my, high rolls at the moment. Two, three, three, huh? <laughs> Uh, there is, well, there will be, it should come out in the, I think it's the third box, or fourth, not sure, but there are imp improved um, imp drive, imp drive zero rule, where whenever you roll double, you flip one of the doubles you roll. Okay. So, for example, in, in your case, it would be two, three, four, you, and you would choose before, once the, the disc is placed on the board you would choose if you're using improved uh, imp drive or the standard one. Uh -huh. It's also one of the rules that was removed uh, while we were streamlining the game. Okay. So Let now to, to, to give you a little bit of the promised, um, promised uh, distraction. Um, how long? Just you, you just think about the question first, and then you answer it as soon as you made the proper turn. Uh, how long was the game in uh, in design in the design process? You can answer whenever you feel it. <laughs> On and off from two or nine, I think. Okay. But uh, around two or twelve, uh, it started as a as a mobile game. Okay. So. Yeah, and we couldn't find um, anyone to invest into it, so we gave up. And then around 2012, it became a board game. Okay. And the the real heavy development, I think, started in was it 2017 or 2018? I'm not sure. Okay. It was it was two years before it was released. As when I say serious development, I mean figuring out how to 
to fit everything in the box, mm -hmm. what needs to go in the box, and so on and so on. It, it took it took m much more than than we expected. Much more okay. time than we expected. Two, three, four, five, six. No, one, two, three, four, five. No, hmm, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Ooh, I can score. So six goes to Conrad. One, two, three, four, five, oh. six. Five goes to Sonia, and it's one, two, three, four, five, and the three goes to Boris. It's yeah, yes, it's one. Yes. Okay. The power of high rolls. No, really. Um, I think it's. Uh, I think it's perfectly um, fine to actually uh, have lower rolls as well because I don't see. I mean, sometimes there's an advantage to both. You know, so I don't really see any advantage of having, for example, a higher, um, a higher uh, dice result during the game. If you don't play cleverly, uh. um, the dice are not worth that much. Yeah, high rolls are oh. hard to plan for and figure out. Lower rolls allow much more control. Mm -hmm. So it depends. For example, in the in the advanced game, high rolls can help with some interesting combos. But then again, low rolls are ones that allow you to prepare interesting combos yeah that's that's one of the the things why we're considering the the improved imp drives rule because it gives you then you have then you usually have one low one medium one high mm -hmm. when I say high that's four plus medium is from two to five and low is Three or less. Okay. So I'm gonna try to stall you a little bit um, in order to uh, to get to know what you are positioning will be in the next turn. So I am gonna do um, move actually in this direction to have this one. Two, this one. Two, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna do something similar with him. So it's one, two, two three, three four, five. four. And now I'm gonna place the three on him. And I'm gonna start moving over. One, two, three. You can end up on the, the disc. I can by. Yeah, but um, if I. For example, you can always... pick it up on this space one. Okay, one. And then it's two. Then two. But then I would cross and... my own goal line, right? Yes, but before you exit your space, you can drop the disc. So you drop the disc. Ooh, bounce. That's incredible. Bounce. Cool. And so I actually yeah. end up over here again. Yes. Okay. With the disc. I can drop it the instance that I. That's good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. They are not goblins. <laughs> the the main idea once we once we got to the point that it's going to be a a board game was I wanted to make a game that something I always won, wanted Blood Bowl to be. Mhm. Mm so and I love I love input randomness a lot because it allows you to it doesn't feel cheap but it again it makes it harder to solve the game. Mm. Yeah, but you can't get into Blood Bowl without a PhD nowadays. 
I feel. Ooh, I, I haven't played it for a long while. I, the, the, the one time in my video where I talked about long and complicated rulebooks, there was actually just the the entirety of the Blood Bowl rulebook scrolling yes. behind me, and I did not double anything. That was the rulebook as it is. It was just scrolling down the PDF. It has a metric <coughs> ton of, si of, of pages. It's incredible. And, and abilities oh, and... Gosh. No. It's still a ball game. It's... It's, it's supposed to be dynamic. Yeah, it... it, it it's, suppo it's supposed to be a simple and interesting game, but... Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, it became much, much more complicated than it, than it should be for what it is. Yeah, but 40k players just adapt to it, or fantasy players as well, I, th I suppose. Well... They are used to that sort of rule set. True. Yeah, but, but actually, that's, because, that's your, because your main cannon is in 36 inch range to my particular unit, I can use a 3 plus saving roll instead of a 2 plus saving roll because you see, I have this preparation token that I can set whenever you fire. Your, I, I don't care. <laughs> just do it. Tell me how it comes <laughs> out. Okay, <laughs> hey, um, I used to play. Uh, Imperial Assault sk uh, Skirmish a lot mm -hmm. and while it does have it had a lot of fiddliness to it um, it was much much more dynamic because small smaller unit count and s squares you can count mm -hmm. instead of eyeball eyeballing things and controlling if your opponent is secret secretly pre-measuring yeah I don't know if you if you got into Netrunner at any point, but uh, there is uh, well, it's not a revised core set. I don't know how to call it. The revised set. It's, I thought the game was dead. Uh, the game is dead, okay. but I mean, it's not dead. It's 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 a bit complicated. The the fan organization is running running the show now, Nisei, and they're. They did a great intro set for for new players, and they even have a much simpler format for new or returning players to to slowly get into the the standard, which is huge. But but they they right now it's called System Gateway, and it's awesome. It's it's what Netrunner core set should be. Okay. So you can, uh, I mean, I think you, you can print it out, or you can even get it on something like uh, how it's called. It's not make playing card. No, it is uh, MPC and drive through cards. I think I have to definitely check it up because I was into Netrunner. Want to move? Want to uh, move over? Um, but mm -hmm. I mean, always on a casual level, you know, I played with friends, if I actually went to the store, I usually just got destroyed in seven turns. Yeah, the, 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 the CI was rampant for most of the game's life. <laughs> it was just such a shame that they, and that always happens for, for me at least with living card games, um, it's just that you can simply leave out 60% of the cards ever printed. Um, because they are just not as good as other cards that have similar effects. Yeah, uh, that's that's a great thing the the Nisei team did. They changed totally changed their approach. Mm -hmm. So every card is has to be valuable because uh, when you check check it out, you'll see that the art is really good. Okay. They're even I think they're even commissioning some of the old. For example, Liga, uh, and I can't remember how uh, I can't remember how the other artists called uh, artists that were doing cyberspace art for Netrunner are are commissioned to do art for the 
the fan version of the game. Mm -hmm. So it even looks incredible. It plays incredible and it looks and it looks incredible. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna spend the six on him. Move one. Okay. Move two, but I drop the disc over here. Then I continue okay. with three and a four and a five and a six. And then I'm gonna spend okay. the last one over there. Hmm. Yeah. This is interesting. But otherwise, Netrunner was a fantastic game. It's my favorite game. I no, started playing no, I it to, uh, in I'm the... I'm sorry if I have to correct you, but I was actually stalking your bot game geek account and your favorite game is Earth Reborn, clearly. Oh, <laughs> I am... <laughs> I am not... Uh, how to say... Mm, Earth date. Reborn was one of my favorite board games but there's the a big issue with the game and that's it lasts it's an hour to set up the board and then two hours to play the game and then i have no idea how to put it back in the box okay yeah there are but but it is, well, at least in 2012, I think, when it was released, it was the best Kermer's game ever made. But to cleverly pick up that point in particular, and also to keep you distracted, um, while I shuffle through what, uh, what games I've, what you, you showed to, to have and to prefer, I, I actually noticed that um, you have uh, some quite competitive games in there and you are usually also into heavier rule sets. So for a guy um. that plays Android, for example, uh, or Titan, or StarCraft, the board game, um, I mean, those are all pretty hefty, rule-heavy games. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. I mean, uh, I, I do enjoy heavier games, but... That doesn't mean I um, how to how to say it in a polite way. Uh, I believe that every game can be streamlined, okay. and that's just a, it's just a shame that it's not happening. Mm. It, that it's not happening more. But it is what it is. I mean, yeah. the right now the the whole industry is. In a, in a weird spot where games are either too simple or too complex. Yeah. That's probably okay. I mean, something for everyone. Yeah, but Kinda. Guess, yeah, but the middle of the road should always play some part as well. Because if you don't, the... if you are not into Gloomhaven or Nemesis, because as you mentioned, you simply don't have the time to set up the gigantic game. Um, to play it into, I mean, if, if a guy like me, I, I have lots of different people coming around for game night. I have gamers, um, but I also have just people who enjoy being around uh, with games. And um, I usually end up having at least one friend at the table who is simply not that much into heavier games. So I'm always getting more use out of the middleweight games or the simpler ones. The big ones just pile up in the cabinet and collect dust. Yes, sadly, that's that's my that's my experience also. And therefore, I think there is there is a, quite a big market for games that have uh, the middle of the road approach regarding their weight. Uh, I'm really looking forward to trying the the second edition of Siege of the Citadel. Mm-hmm. It's I don't know if you've played the the first no. first edition, but it's a, it's a really simple dungeon crawler. Yeah. The the mechanics are bare bones, but the the main catch of the game is uh, you always play as a campaign, and during the campaign, every player will will at least once be the bad guy. Okay. When you're the when you're the bad guy, you get experience for your team, much more experience than you would get in a normal mission. But while you're working as the good guys, you're not really working together. 
Okay. You sort of, sort of are because you have to pass the mission. But everyone has their secret goal. And then it's some weird semi co op. And the mechanics are simple, are really simple, and most of the game comes from interacting, interaction and banter between players and figuring out who is going to backstab who and for okay. what. Sounds interesting. I, yeah, I should. Yeah, I should definitely update my board game geek collection. Yeah, I know what you mean. I also have lots of uh, of dust lying around, things that you get rid of. Um, pom, pom, pom. <sighs> okay. Mm. I have to make. Some some decisions so I'm gonna put him three and four okay I am using him for the one and then I'm gonna put down the six and it's one now the question is Two. I simply have to try it. Okay, so it's one. Then I push you, but I make you leave the discus. Okay. Uh, two, three, four, five. I'm leaving it there. And uh, oh, five I... is here. here. Yeah, and then six. Six. Hmm. The one really uh, messed up the turn. This will be interesting. I should have a high chance of downing the static, but I would prefer to do something interesting instead. Hmm. Well, mm, no, yeah. no figures will be downed today. Well, hmm. the one point on your scoring board says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, let me see if I can do something interesting. One, two, three, four. That's not good. Hmm, but I can do something like this. It's one, two, two, three, four. And then I... And then I have three figure out something. Okay, why not? One, two. Let's go with two on Boris. That's one, two. Let's go with four on Conrad. That's one, two. Ah, let's make it three. Three to, to down him, and then I have four with one, two, three, four. That's not good. Two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right. You are very kind, sir. I know what you did there, and I appreciate it greatly. Um, okay. So, 
Um, the question is, will I return the favor? Um, please do, please do. Let me figure out if this might be a scoring possibility. Oh, it, in this game, it isn't. Okay. Please carry on. But you can definitely place in a scary position for me. I think the 4 would be a better choice, so you don't overextend. Mm. Um, I'd say... I'm going to put the 6 down on her. Uh, I don't think that's... Okay, oh, uh, maybe I'm not seeing something. Three, four, five, six. Then I'm gonna putting the four down on him. Okay. Play one, two, two, three. And now I bounce. Yes. Yes, and I take the discus with me. Yes, and I think you end up on the... Uh, ah, that's the room again, where I don't... Yeah. You always... Further. Yeah. Um, you always spend one. And then I just... Get... Yeah, you could have used... Yes, you could have used the discharger to push Blue Thunder on the disc and then use her to push him somewhere. I'm not sure how the marking okay, works. If, I mean, if you don't roll a one, I'm fine. So how bad can it be? <laughs> well, it's not only one. There is a lot of, and it's three dice. So rolling a one is, I don't know. I think it's 40% chance. Let's see it. Aha. Well. <laughs> Hmm. Imp overdrive. Hmm. So this is one of the the points against always rolling high. Yeah. Mm, let me think of it. But I mean, so, uh, I, I'm I'm still very much uh, continuing this because of your earlier grace, so I don't. Uh, I don't want to put myself into a better sh uh, spotlight than it actually is. One, two, three, four, five, one. Hmm. One, two, three, four, two. Hmm, yeah, why not? Let's go with 5 on Sonya. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. Then we... Then, sorry, let's make it 6. 6, then go... Five on Boris, that's one, two, three, four, five, and then use the six for Gonrad to stand up. Oh, sorry. Off by one errors. Didn't flip him. Oh, no, he's actually down again. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Down again. Off by good. one errors. Off by one errors. That's plenty. Um, mm. That is plenty.
Oh man, <clears throat> I, I really hope you don't mind, but I have only enough imagination for one possible turn, which actually uh, isn't returning the favor that you gave me earlier. So really please, please, please do return the favor. Um, so it's one. I think you can even down two of my figures. Now you can't, you can't then defend the scoring line. It's right. one, two, three, four, five. One, yeah. Two, three, four, and I down here, right? Yep. Okay. Ah, it feels shitty, but it really was the only option that I actually could think of. Why? Because you had the op opportunity earlier. I saw this. You showed me kindness, and how did I return it? What will my fans think of me? Oh. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No, we're playing. We're playing. I must say, I'm enjoying it. I haven't... I haven't played the base version of the game for so long. Well, if you even get some enjoyment out of it, what better could, could there be? One... Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three. No. One. One, two. And let's go with three here. One, two, three. Okay. That's stable. The Holy Trinity, as we call it. But there's always <laughs> an angle. There's always an angle. Um, oh, yes. Okay, let's say I just try to put her over here with the five. And okay. Then I'm gonna bring him over one. Okay. And now I have to block the rowing line. I think I'm gonna actually need that one for the one. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. No problem. I can't otherwise, get in the in the little shiny, <laughs> the shiny pool yes. of uh, three pointness. Uh, so therefore, I'm gonna have the six. Uh, but I might still be able to get me somewhere advantageous. Um, hmm. gonna push him or do you uh, let's say it's one two three four five six um, uh, with six you can stay in place yeah yeah okay I Don't think I... one two three four five six yeah not not the best uh, outcome, mm -hmm. but still... mm -hmm. yes yeah okay well it's it's a solid defense I can probably do something. Let me roll the dice. So, one rule that we actually... <laughs> I must say, I must say, I, I find it very frustrating when I don't need so many high, high, <laughs> high rolls. Yeah. Uh, let me figure out... Let me figure out something. Hmm. Uh, this is interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
two, three, four, five. Nope. One, two, three, four, five. And then two, three, four, five. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, there is there is no way to to score. Okay, Conrad, it is it's one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. Uh -huh. and then let's see one, two. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, not good. One, two, three, four, no, not good. Hmm. One, two, three, four, six. Interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, why not? One, two, picking the disc. Mm -hmm. Three, dropping the disc. Mm -hmm. Four, five, six. So the disc is here. And then doing one, two. Hmm, is there anything interesting that this can do? Two, three, four, five, six. Really? Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, it was a bit, a bit more involved. Oh, uh, absolutely. Take it. <laughs> this is not Yahtzee after all. Um, but let's see True. what I can do with that. Mm. Well, you can down yeah, 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 most I of my figures. Can, but can I make the magic happen? That's the question. Um, okay. I think. I won't be able to, but at least I might go for this. I am putting the two down on him for one and two in that direction. Okay. I'm putting a five on him to down her. Uh, you could down both Gonrad and Sonia because Gonrad is in in. Uh, it's not the corner, but if you dash at him with discharger, you can down him because it would be. Would the obstacle count? As... Be... Yes, that's why he would go into the space with his opponent and then fall. Okay. That's why you you count only when you change spaces. Okay, so it would be. Um, let's just. So if and... I put a two down on him and I moved into. Conrad's position, he would actually be down. One, two, and he's down. Yes. Okay. 
and, uh, and you can down and then I can use the five on him to push her over there or you can use it on Blue Thunder to just down Sonya I think look how that I like work it. is that's that's probably a better play okay. but you also have the option that would be one Sonya falls yes Blue Thunder needs to move out of her space. She would exit from the two different sides of the same space without mm -hmm. changing the space and lose all of the remaining impulses. That's one of the, let's call it, that's the rule uh, I'm said exists, but it has to exist to prevent uh, how it's called infinite loops. Yeah. Um, now I'm actually okay with uh, with her moving a little bit farther this turn. So I think I'll actually, the question is, need I need the six? Uh, it's one, two, three, no, I don't need the six. So therefore the five would do for him. Mm -hmm. Direction to go one, two, three. Three. And that means this then would be the four, four. And one more space. And five. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And then... Um, we're gonna have the six, and with that, I will go into uh, he goes there, that's okay, that's cool. If he ends up one, two, three, four, what would the odds be? Uh, let's say I move over. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's ah, yeah, uh, it's it's the wrong corner. Okay, sorry. One, two, three, yeah. four, five, six. Yeah, yeah, actually. Okay. Okay, let's Will see if I can. That? That's the magical question. Let's see. How will he... Now comes the one one three. Now exactly when I don't require you to when you, when you don't need to roll anything, you just roll the ones. So your statistic keeps still clean, but you manage to stand up on ones, which is nice. Well, uh, to be honest, hmm, two three, and then I stand up on ones, and then I go down again well it is what it is the three goes to boris and why not he goes one two three and the rest goes to standing up Well, you can still do a semi beat down mm. by downing two of my figures. But then I don't change much. And I like to be more proactive than that. Um, I mean, yes, mm. of course. You can obvious. set up yourself to, I think, to be yeah, in a better spot was, for the next turn. One, just, two, three, four, five, six. And then you would have two, two. Yeah, it's, I think it's the better option. You're still slowing me down a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also having those two here and the disc over here is just too risky for myself. So I just think that True, I... but if you down them, you can... I think you can place the the big guy so that he can pick up the disc in the, on the next turn. Let me mm -hmm. see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you could go one, two... You could pick up the disc with Discharger on the next turn and still keep 
at least one of my figures down. Mm. Yeah, I think it's the it's it's the best option. I'm gonna use the one to down Conrad again, up against the wall. And therefore, do I move? Uh, no, you spent one impulse for him Just to move. Yeah. yeah. Then it's the six for him, going into that direction. So it's going yes. Two, push for the three. Then uh, it's a four, four five, six. five, six. Yes. And then we have a two for seven. And I need to get on the magic line. Um, I'm moving over here. One, two. All right. Okay. Let's see. Okay, one, two, one, two, three, and then just stand up and hope for the best. No, well. next turn turn will be interesting. Uh, Boris will use the three to go one, two, three, and the rest will stand up. Okay. Um, obviously can't push him. That could be one, two, three. Yeah, but then, yeah, that's yeah. a bit risky. Um, I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna move him two. in that direction. Okay. One picking up one. This. Okay, two. Three behind. Three. Um, that leaves you open to, uh, to a squash. I actually, yeah, but, um, it's not, it's one particular result, uh, for Sonia to squash because I intend to one, two, three, four, five, put this. Whatever, but whatever I roll, I can go from here. And then just push him into uh, either right, the prone. Uh, I bounce on him, but I still go down because I cannot move there. I see. Yes. Yeah. No, that's that's actually the rule that I that my some of my friends will uh, actually be quite interested in that rule at the moment. Oh, so that's how it, it goes. Doesn't. Actually. Um, that's. Um... Maybe we should uh, should should have more examples. We did put out a bunch of playthrough videos, but it's not like people are watching them. So. <laughs> so then. Uh, I exactly, think you should. It's exactly the same thing. I have to push him through. I think. Sorry. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you need more than three. Yeah, that's, that's Sadly, not working as intended. Um, mm. it the five, so it's one pickup. Two, two, three, four, four and five. Five. That is still risky, but uh, you can. Pro yeah. Oh, you mm, yeah. you can down Boris. Mm -hmm. And that will that take care of that issue. And um, now you would only push me into that direction. One, two, one, two, three, 
four on four or more I uh, will down your this carrier I think with Sonya I'm not sure let me see it be one two three four oh my yeah gosh. Uh... Because that's the because you get redirected by the yeah. again. I thought you would push me over here, but it actually it with with uh, Gonrad I would push mm -hmm. you in a different direction. Yeah, but with Sonia, okay, it's I didn't see it Touché. while you were making your move. Touché. So we're both set up for match point then. Yes. Let's see if you can finish this off with a with a cool uh, throw as, at the uh, at the end to show off how that works. But I'm not giving up that uh, that easily. <clears throat> okay. Well, you are pretty favored at the moment. Okay, let's go for my favorite strategy. <laughs> Making the opponent believe I don't have a plan by acting like it. That's how Kasparov defeated Big Blue. Um, <laughs> coming back to that point. Uh, okay. So what do I want to do with that? Um, I want to... Set up the cards. I want to set him up here one two three four I want to set him up here one two three four and then I'm gonna make one two pick up the disc three four five six all right Okay, let's see if I can do something interesting. This is the play. Five goes to Sonia. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Six goes to Boris. Going one, two, three, four, five. Pushing him and falling prone. And finally, the one goes to Gunrad. I just need to figure out what he'll do. So, push here. You can do a push here. And this is probably here. Okay. All right. So, before I get me out of this... Uh... A particular difficult situation. Let me get off a short question for you to answer, so I have more time to think and look cleverer than I am. Um, what what gets you interested in a game? What's the first thing that makes you think, oh, oh, that's that looks good? Mm, depends. I don't have a, let's call it predictable preference for a game. For example. Mm, I usually am more focused on mechanics of the game, but there are some games that I like 
because of the mood they create. For example, uh, Arkham, Arkham Horror, the the collectible card game, or mm -hmm. whatever it's called. It's not collectible, it's living card game, something like that. Yeah. So, for example, that game blew me away. We we played the, the first mini campaign, and once we set the set the board for the second scenar scenario, it blew me away. And I think that's the that's probably the the last game that really blew me away. I don't remember playing anything. Um, anything after that that really gave me that wow moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm also, I don't know, uh, I like... I'm also a large Lovecraft fan, but I sort of gave my heart already to the uh, also discontinued Call of Cthulhu uh, living card game. Oh, I loved that one. That where you... The the first one, the Call mm -hmm. of Cthulhu or the, the Mythos one? The, the Call of Cthulhu. I love that game. I couldn't, I couldn't forgive them for printing printing the uh, how the guy is called as agency instead of of miskatonic mm. that was that was unfortunate but it is what it is yeah. we always house ruled him as miskatonic okay so i think i have an idea uh, i start with him in that direction which means one two okay i'm using her Okay. One impulse to hand over the disc and the second one to move him okay. in that direction. And, and then I'm gonna and five. one, two, three, four, five. Okay. okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's see if I can do something about it. Hmm. So that will be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, and then two. One, two. Hmm, too risky. One, two, three. Well, I have to. I will have to do the predictable thing. Six on Gonrad and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Go for three on Sonia. That would be one, two, three, and use two. For Boris to stand up, and now I hope you don't get one, two, three. Well, you need four or more to to win the game. All right, then. and that there's not just, there's not much I can do about it. It's just those dice, then. All right, part of the dice. Uh, there's the six and the five. Uh, I got disconnected. Give me a moment to go back three. and lose yeah, with some yeah. dignity. Yeah, I, I exactly know those people. Ah, shit. Now we both disconnected. The game broke. The game broke. You, you made this table. <laughs> and I, I have to assume that you created it exactly in that particular way that if there was a chance to uh, to, to score the last point, uh, the game would actually uh, be finished. I have to assume... Yeah, that um... Um, I would love to to be able to to script it that way, but I haven't used Lua for a long time, and I'm not installing Unity just to to fiddle with 
with but, Ableton Simulator. Yeah, but but I'm still nonetheless uh, happy that we that we managed to um, to to get the final uh, final shot before the uh, before the game broke. It's actually open again, so if you want to come in for, for a little bit more of a chit-chat and then we're gonna wrap this uh, up. We'll, we'll do... Uh, same game, same password. As soon as... Okay... Isn't there a way for us to reload or something, how to save? Well, I, I we should have an auto save. I have an auto save. I loaded up the the very last turn before. Oh, awesome! Awesome! That's awesome. Uh, let me just redo the. So, if I remember, it was one, two, three, four, five, six. So, one, two, three. Four, five, six, one, two, three, and okay. Okay. So I assume you you roll at least one four. So let's see. Maybe maybe fate saved you this time. I won't edit this out. So this is happening live, people. If I now roll one one, no, there it is. Okay. That's there it. That's it, it. That's it. Actually, one, one two, two, three, three, four, and that's it. And that's it. There is no. There is no. No, no, no. You pushed me into the goal space with. Mm -hmm. Well, you scored the goal using my player, so yeah. you win. With seven points. Oh man, how unexpected! Which is, which is a maximum maximum that can happen in a game. Ah, uh, come and on! And that... me. I will rewatch this video. I tell you, and if I see more than one occasion where you were nicer to me than you ought to, uh, I I won't, I won't be too too happy about that. But anyway, I promise I wasn't I wasn't nice. I promise okay. I wasn't nice. Except I'm just really really rusty on the the base base game because anyway oh, we it would have, have to... been it would have been an absolute pleasure to play this with you uh, no matter the outcome that's uh it was absolutely great i have one or two more things that i just wanted to ask you before the, we wrap this up real quick Please, um, because please I was do. just interested in it. So you actually managed to produce the game entirely in Serbia? Because it's uh, in yes. the box and I'm always pointing that point out because usually you see China there, but you made it in Serbia. Yes, uh, we... Well, we wanted to avoid Kickstarter route. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I had, well, that was probably a dumb decision at the end of the day mm. but given that we were avoiding kickstarter then there was no point in producing it in china and the the guys from imprint the the printing house that did the game do a really really good work with the the printing and the, the whole cardboard thing yeah the quality is top notch. Uh, the dice and the standees, well, those were the best I could find locally. I have to... And... Can you, can you please repeat? Yes, no, I, I, I was just saying, um, I'm, absolutely, I'm absolutely fine with the material, because it gives you exactly what you require, and if, for example, there would be crazy people out there um, who wanted to let's say, patch it themselves with, let's say, Dreadball Minis or so. Um, if people want to go for the extra mile, you always can do that. But the question is, what does the game provide with its core box? And what I always um, loathe is that mostly, be exactly because of the Kickstarter situation where you have to put minis in to get people interested, is that you usually tend to pay 10 or 15 euro more for a game that you would have to 
simply because there is no other option than to get the additional plastic. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, also, also, the interesting thing is one of the, well, I like s smaller games because as in comp games that come in compact boxes that don't take up m more space yeah. than they really need to. And for example, that's one of the things we got criticized for that uh, the box is too pricey for for its size. So that's something that I didn't realize when when we were producing the game. Too so that's that's an size. interesting point. Okay. No, I don't think it's um, too pricey. It comes with two boards. You have the dice in it. You have the standees. You have the well, yes, but people are used to big boxes, big empty boxes. Yeah, but I don't have space for big empty boxes i mean i i can probably imagine what you do with big boxes after you unpack the game especially expansions um they go to the waste simply like that you pack them up put them yeah in the court, sadly and... they they usually go well to the attic or something no, in i, case, I can't even bother i anymore. can't bring myself i can't bring myself to, to throw them away no I, I, my, I usually wife, have... my, my wife manages that for me, so uh, she, she, she gave clear direction where too much uh, shelf space isn't uh, allowed anymore and therefore I just have to get rid of the boxes. I, I can't. And I'm also very yeah. happy because she pushed me over that edge and now I feel far more free to do it. I can simply <laughs> throw this stuff away. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to try something, something like that. Yeah. No, because... you you even said in in your rule book or on the back of your box that you uh you respect the shelf space of people and i like that i like that very much we were even even with the the current let's say feedback that the box is well too pricey for its size we still plan to keep doing uh smaller boxes where you can sleeve everything and fit everything in mm -hmm. and it's and it doesn't eat up a lot of shelf space yeah so for example outside of dash arena we are working i think on two or three more games that okay, cool. will happen at some point and so we we try videos? to yes okay. uh one of the games we we tried really hard to put it in a deck box mm -hmm. and the game is the game is well it's not 4x but it's close okay you recruit you recruit your armies move around the board and so on and we are still trying to fit it into it because it's with all the tokens all the cards you need it can with cards sleeved it fits into one deck box mm -hmm. so but the issue with that is the there is a lot of components and that small deck box would cost cost a lot so we'll 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 have to figure out some way to to say hey this this looks like a small game but it's not it's small because you build the the board out of cards yeah. which don't even need to be cards we'll see if we'll we'll go with cards or something else i mean i'm not up to date to the, I guess you are familiar with the Tiny Epic series of games, because it has uh, a yes. similar box size. Um, I guess it might be. No, I think it's slightly less, um, but it's in the same price range. So if you if you get yourself a Tiny Epic um, uh, Defenders or Kingdom or Zombies or whatever it is, I guess it's pretty comparable to Dash Arena actually in size and price as well. It is, but the the issue is, tiny epic games are not is it's not something that you could usually found on on the board game shelves. Mm -hmm. There really? there are a few, let's say, but well, they are successful, but they they know, know their audience and their audi audience is is willing to to buy the small box because they know what they're getting that what they're getting in that small box. Mm -hmm. And they made a brand out of it that, hey, if you buy our game, you will get a big game in a small box. 
Yeah. No, I, there are there are some that are quite a, quite good. Um, I'm not a fan of all of them, but the concept in general I like very much because it's also <laughs> always an issue if you want to go somewhere um, and play a game um, while you're on vacation. Uh, you certainly wouldn't pack Kingdom Death Monster in, um, but something for like example this is, is feasible. Absolutely. Or you don't don't take your nemesis with you just because. If you're not entirely crazy, or you well, leave out all the socks and all the fresh underwear. I mean, there's there are compromises to be made, of course. Uh, but I would always go for, for a smaller that, box if I can. Well, Nemesis could probably fit without too much issues if you remove all the, the miniatures and replace them with tokens. Mm, that's a good idea. That would also be a good idea to I mean, make that's... the game a little bit more affordable for people that aren't that necessarily well uh, established money-wise and then you just have an upgrade kit with miniatures if you don't want to get entirely crazy. <laughs> uh, we at some point planned on doing some miniatures for Dash Arena, mm -hmm. but we, would prob we will probably well, either release them as print and play for resin printing mm -hmm. or something like that because realistically you don't need miniatures I'm right now I'm even I'm even against standees because tokens work so much better and less and they take up much less space we could have probably gone with the smaller board and fit even more stuff in if we use tokens instead of standees. Mm. Yeah, but that's also the aforementioned compromise that you have to make between presentation and um, yeah and production because you you have to show people something. I mean, I understand that you have to have a product that looks attractive so people take the first click. Okay, Get, go to the website. Uh, go onto the board game geek side of the game and have a look at it because they've seen it and they see something that they like. I mean, the visual impression is still always the first thing. But I'm I'm a huge fan of um, of upgradable of the upgradable concept where you can game where you can get a game at an affordable price. And if you want to go a step beyond because you think, well, yeah, I like it so much that I want to invest in it. You simply get the 30, 40 euro upgrade box that comes with the miniatures, then then you can just replace the tokens with. Yeah, that's that's something that we, if we ever do Kickstarter, that's something we 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 might do. But otherwise, it's there's just no, it's not feasible to to print both the game and the upgrade, mm -hmm. which is a bit. Which, which is a shame, really. I mean, I would probably buy more games. For example, I'm not that big fan of Nemesis, but I I would probably buy it if it had cardboard tokens, so I can at, re at least have something similar with that alien's feel. Mm -hmm. You know, the funny thing but is that give it's, it's, yeah. It's, I mean... When I was a kid, having, I don't know, Space Hulk was... There was no way we can afford Space Hulk. Mm. So what we did was we created our own... Well, let's say one friend had it, so we would create our own, let's call them print and play versions. Yeah. With tokens and so on. And in the end, we prefer them because you can pack them up in a small box, put it in your backpack and play it after school or something <laughs> oh. you, there is no way you can you can hold the space hulk box yeah and that's, that was that's i think actually my... quite cool i never i, I can't I think... imagine having people in school that would actually play space hulk with me after school everyone was just playing magic the gathering um well there is some um, how to say sometimes it's fortunate not being able to to grab everything you want mm. because it you, it forces you to to play what you have and to get so creative. yeah definitely for example the the siege of the citadel 
Uh, that's a game I saw at friend's house, and we played it a lot. Mm -hmm. But if, for example, if we had to choose between Siege of the Citadel, I don't know, Warhammer Quest or whatever was at the similar point in time, mm -hmm. we would probably play both a bit and then move to something else. Similar to Netrunner, we had two decks that we played until the, the cards were so marked we couldn't... There was no point in playing Corporation anymore. Okay, <laughs> if, because you knew where the agendas came. Well, we, 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 didn't, we didn't know uh, that, that sleeves exist at the moment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, also there's, there are... Uh, quite a few discussions to be had actually about the market has evolved in the last 10 to 15 years and the shift from a game to something that you can enjoy with friends to a collectible item that in most cases and let's be quite frank um, is either kickstarted by people uh, who don't play it that often or rather never play it Because you read so many comments on board game geeks, especially on Kickstarter stuff, where people say unwrapped. Because they mm -hmm. never opened it because they back so much. Or y they buy five copies to get them off on eBay for a much higher price. You yeah. Know? And, And the, they the always. The enjoyable they... aspect is, is a little bit reduced, I have the feeling. <laughs> And uh, the funny thing is, they always rate it as a 10. Yeah, it's always a 10. Always. Which which makes no sense. I think I have one game in my collection which I would rate a 10. I wouldn't even... My favorite game is Android Netrunner and I would, wouldn't rate it as a 10. Because it's definitely... It's not a game I, I would play every, every day. Every, I don't want to play it every day. I have to be mentally prepared. Even if I really love the game, I have to be mentally prepared to play it. Yeah. And that's the point. Yeah. There are no tens and there are no ones. And, but Kickstarter makes them happen and therefore the entire rating system is somewhat shifted. Sadly. Yeah. Well, to be, to be honest, Earth Reborn was, I think, my, my only ten game. Mm -hmm. Because it was... While I was actively playing it, I was always willing to play it and I was always bugging people to play it. Even if I am tired, uh, it wasn't that big of an issue because ah, there are dice, there is a chance. I can always just wing it and play with gut feel mm -hmm. without thinking too much. That's not something you can do with Netrunner. I mean, you can, but you will, you will definitely lose. Yeah. <laughs> if you, last question um, that I have, um, if you would have no limitations Time-wise, money-wise, what would the game uh, be that you would design? <laughs> do, you have, uh, do you have any idea what it would look like? Would it be an epic dungeon crawler? Would it be a strategic game that lasts three days? Would it be, uh, would it be the, the virtual reality version of Dash Arena or the holographic table for that? How would, how would the game turn out if you had no limitations designing at all? Uh, if we're talking about Dash Arena, well, it would have at least 12 teams in a box. Uh, it would have campaign variant. I mean, it still has it. Uh, it just not finished yet because time limitations. Um, is there anything else? It would have much more arenas, much more boosters also much more teams and so on and so on i mean there we're for example we started working on a team builder that was before we ditched it and said okay let's let's go with the first box as is and then figure out what we'll do after that we had the idea of uh league games where you first you draft your team then you are trying to keep them 
in your team by paying them and so on and so on. Okay. And there, are some, there was a complicated system of grudges and so on and so on that had to be covered by the, by the app. So you would use the app to, to create your team. The app would be from time to time updated to add new grudges between different figures. So if there is some overpowered combination, it would be broken by having a grudge. So those players can play in the same team. And um, the, the whole campaign system would include having um, you can, oh, well, you can see that all cards have some subtypes, both types and subtypes. Those are for the campaign game, mm -hmm. and that will happen at some point. So you for example, like that. yes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, let's call it a class. A class. Every figure. Well, most figures have a class that would be runner, blocker, thrower, enforcer, and prowler. Mm -hmm. Then they have one or more subtypes. And sub um, well, classes give a wide, wide range of abilities, while subtypes do interesting things. Similar, um, I'm trying to, to remember any game that used something similar. similar uh, I don't know if you played uh, Vampire, the the card game. No, not the card. The, the one only, from the only 90s. The, only the pen and paper. Yeah, well, the card game had an interesting mechanic where when you play cards from hand, you have to play them through your vampires. Uh -huh. So vampire would have some skills, and you can only play a card if you have a vampire that has the, the required skills. Okay. So the campaign game would introduce a hand, a hand of cards that you would draw at the start of the game and long story short, you would have some hidden information and you could use them for different abilities and effects. Mm -hmm. it, it, it brings the power level of the game much higher than it is right now and it's probably if you don't like playing advanced game then definitely the campaign game would not be for you for example okay. because much more abilities much more stuff and the game well at least from our current testing finish much much quicker yeah but it's, as long as it's optional and everybody can decide uh, exactly how they prefer to play the game. Um, I think that's a perfect exactly. solution. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Then uh, I'd um, say, do you, do you want to uh, to say something else before we wrap this up real quick? I have a little something that I prepared for you as well. Well, I had a lot of fun, I have to admit. Thank you very much. I, I also found it a very pleasant uh, very pleasant game. Um, I mean, of course, uh, I will now have to make myself um, a huge uh, champion of Dash Arena t-shirt, which, which I will prowl around in Essen, if it happens uh, this year, actually. Uh, because now... Ooh, no, uh, let, me, let me figure out... But first, I, I want Can to, you... to hand something little to you. It should be loading... Uh, at the moment, Ooh. Uh, I don't know if you can if you can see it, but uh, if you want to uh, to just keep this, uh, you can save it as an object, and then uh, you can use the playmat just for uh, for your future games or whatever comes. Ooh. I definitely will. Just as a nice uh, thank you that you actually joined a random guy that asked you if you, if you would uh, play um, a round of Dash Arena with him. Always. I mean, mm, I'm trying to, to find the right the right word. But we're pr playing board games. We're not random guys. We're gamers. So I'm always up for. As long as I'm not swarmed with work, I'm always up for 
playing anything, more or less. Okay, then thanks again so much, and uh, thank you. I think I'll just uh, cut off the recording right now, and say, of course, uh, thank you to everybody who uh, who stayed with us up until this point. I hope you found this interesting. I hope that you will uh, try Dash Arena as soon as possible because it definitely deserves more love and appreciation than it gets right now. And I'm personally uh, looking forward to what comes up from uh, all that Chaos Games in the future very much. And with that, uh, have a nice evening. Have a nice time. I hope you get through this trouble time as well. And at some point, we might even meet in Essen again. Likewise. Okay. I really hope we can, at least, if not this year, then the next one. Let's see. Okay. So for now, that was that. Goodbye and good night.